Hello there, fellow Space Captains. It's Connor, and welcome back to another Fractured Space Ship Overview. And it's been a while, so I decided to kick this one off with an amazing ship that I'm having a lot of fun with at the moment, and that is the USR Light Defense, the Endeavor. So, yep, on paper, whenever I received the email, I did not think this was a ship that I would have enjoyed as much as I am. In fact, I didn't think I would enjoy it at all. But this thing is... It's right up my alley. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, not just the... Because of the fact that you can lock an area down quite adequately. And keep the enemy on their toes. But it's... Just the combination of uh, abilities this thing comes equipped with. And the weaponry. It just works well together. So... Right, now, yeah, usually with these uh, ship overviews, I just read out the general info down here, then we go through the loadout, and then we have ourselves a game. But I also just usually, to start with, take a look at the ship visually, and note some of my previous experiences in said ship. So, you can tell just off the... So you're off the boat or shuttle that this little thing is... Well, it's it's by no means little. It's uh, 871 metres long. Uh, and it's very USR in design. Very... I'm not really sure what you call the actual aesthetic or design behind it. But it looks very modern. Well, to ourselves in this day and age 2017 to how our space stations and rockets are just with its overall design you know in comparison to something like uh, let's see for example let's say the persecutor it looks a lot more you know futuristic than the USR designs but nonetheless it's a very nice ship I'm also using the Nautilus skin uh, just because I think it looks very nice now the main difference you can see with the Endeavour over other USR ships is that it has a lot of these little dispensing ports here. Like, there's these ones here. Uh, there's pretty much one at any one part of the ship. It's even got one here in the rear, so it can put by little turrets. So that's, that's, that's nice. Uh, let me see. But... Yeah, it's it's a nice USR design. It's a bit I suppose you could say it's it's a ship only the shipyard could love. Or the mother well it's a horrible pun, but you know what I mean. It I I think it looks gorgeous. I really do, and I'm not really a fan of uh, the majority of the USR ships. But in line with the let's see, the destroyer Oh, that's a sexy ship. The Black Widow. Now, uh, what's another one? I really, really like the Watchman on the Ghost. Very, very nice ship. And you'll also notice something to point out. The new shipyard, or hangar, is in place. And it is really, really nice. It's really cool. Gives you an overall better idea of how grand and massive your ship is. It really does. Uh, just before I get into the little blurb of info here, I'm getting sidetracked, but it's for a good cause, trust me. Here's a little fighter down here. You see it? It's currently docked. And there's a little like, cargo train here. What do you see the size of the guns on the destroyer? So, if you notice, just taking off there, it's a little cargo ship, a little frigate. Look at the size of the guns in, in comparison to that. One of the barrels is bigger than a, a frigate, or even, you know, it's it's longer than one of these little trains that are carrying or ferrying, um, like, supplies back and forth and um, crew members. Oh, this ship's fucking gorgeous, isn't it? It really is. What's going on with the United Space Research there? It's a little bit weird. Hmm. It'd be nice if we could put our own names onto the ship or, you know, name our own ships. Hopefully that will be something to come soon. Get on that, guys. Get on that HKS. I trust you. But anyway, yeah, so let's firstly look in on the Endeavour. Now, this thing, although it is quite big, or well, you'd assume it is, quite bulky, 
it's not a ship that's uh, very, very good in close quarters combat or in a prolonged fight if the enemy are focusing on you. Not at all. Uh, it comes with uh, a base hull strength, or, well, HP points of 6,000, and the initial max speed is 660. So let's compare that to something that's about a similar size and look the displacer. So it moves faster than the displacer, but has considerably lower health. And this is considered a light defense ship, whereas the displacer is an attack ship. Okay, so... Let me see. Yeah, this thing, it's not for like those quarters defense. It's more using those turrets that come with it type of defense. But anyway, let's look in here and read the little blurb of info. So, the Endeavour utilizes deployable turrets to enhance the defense of key objectives, assist allied advance, and minimize the number of routes enemies can flank. These flexible turrets can work independently or together when commanded when commanded to bring down a dedicated threat. Management, tactical positioning and preparation rather than brute force are key to success. And oh, if you can work these turrets, and if you can work this ship, it'll never do you any harm. In fact, it'll do you pretty damn well in game. You'll get a lot of kills and you'll be rich in credits. And as I say, XP, but I don't think that's that's nothing that hasn't been in the game in quite a while. Anyway, yeah, it's a, it's a really nice ship. I enjoy it thoroughly. It's a uh, pretty much similar, I would say, to the Zarek Gladiator. Where is she? There she is. Now, I don't think it's as good as the Gladiator in locking down a position. I mean, come on, it's the Gladiator. It is. It does well at what it does best, and it's the best at what it does. So, doesn't have anything on the Gladiator, but anyway. It's still very good at what it does. So, right, now this is its armament, or its abilities. And first off, we'll start with its main armament, its main weapon, the Void Cannon. Okay, this is its main defensive armament. Um, when, of course, it can be used in conjunction, or without the sentry turret. The sentry turret is for, you know, dealing the most amount of damage possible. Whereas the Void Cannon is just for defending yourself or laying on the damage whenever your turrets are focusing something down. So, basically, you can use it at any time, unless, of course, your weapons have been disabled, that type of thing. So, the max range is 17,550 meters. Okay. The optimum range is 10,000 meters. So, that's where you would have the best and most overall accuracy. And, uh, well, certified hits. The refire rate is 0 0.333 seconds, so it is fairly quick. And the base damage per impact is 12, plus 3 AoE, and plus 5 armor. So the direct impact on a ship is 12. It does 5 damage to armor, and does 3 damage to anyone in the area of the impact, or ships, or you know, fighters, that type of thing. And it fires 4 in a volley. Right, so the Void Cannon is a close to mid-range weapon that both impact and AoE damage. With both impact and AoE damage, I should say. Uh, reading directly from the little blurb there. Uh, next, we move on to the most interesting and most badass part of the ship. The Sentry Turret. Okay, now the range of these guns, these sexy little spheres of destruction, are 10,000 meters. You can fire and have three of these up at a time. And you can fire and launch one of these things every three seconds. Uh, magazine cooldown is 80 seconds for each of them. They have HP in the area of 1,850. Their sensor range is 12,000 meters. Their base damage is 30. Well, pretty much each time they hit, they deal 30 damage. PPD, I'm still not... Somebody has pointed that out to me before. Still not sure what it actually stands for. Uh, point per damage, I'm not sure. But um, each volley... They fire four from their main guns, and the refire rate is every 0 0.25 seconds. So they're, you know, they're they're good enough. The turret base cooldown is two seconds. So these things are sexy. They're as sexy as sexy gets in fractured space. So 
a flexible system that allows the Endeavour to create kill zones, lockdown areas, or provide general support in strategic locations. Sentry turret prioritise targets the Endeavour currently has selected, else will automatically fire on the first enemy that enters their range or if fired upon. The Endeavour can place a maximum of three turrets at once. Placing a new sentry turret in excess of three will destroy the oldest turret. The player sees a turret icon on their map for each of the turrets placed and is alerted when a sensory turret is attacking a uh, target as well as when it is destroyed. Now one thing I find these very useful for is if you're on a lane on your own, I would usually have these things hiding behind an asteroid depending on which you know sector you're on and which sectors the map loads up. Um, and they're very good for ambushes, as well as holding down Gamma and defending Gamma. Well, you're not going to be able to take Gamma on your own. No way. Not if the entire enemy team shows up. But, they're very, very useful. And it's... I've still not seen too many people focusing down your turrets. I've still seen a lot of people trying to focus you down, or your allies, and completely ignoring these turrets whenever they're the ones doing the majority of the damage. Uh, next we'll move on to something that is very key to your defence uh, as well, and you're holding down a location, defending it, and those are the concussion mines. So their max range is uh, approximately 3,000 metres, okay, uh, you fire 8 of them, each mine on impact does 200 damage, the concussion effect lasts 2 seconds, low effect is 10%, so they're slow by 10%, and the base cooldown for these guys is 45 seconds. Okay, and these are really important in your overall play style in this ship. So, the concussion mines are hidden from the enemy targeting systems until they are armed. Once armed, these mines are set to detonate in close proximity to any target, dealing damage, uh, dealing damage while slowing the target down and disabling their ability systems for two seconds. They're so good. Any ship that comes with mines, instant favourite. Right, and just on from the concussion mine, we move on to my favourite. Uh, well, apart from the sentry turrets, my second favourite, the sentry missiles. Oh yes, so you can command your turrets to deploy their own little attack armament in the form of missiles. And these things, apart from visually, visually looking cool and, you know, epic... They're also pretty nice on the damage as well. So they have a range of 18,000 meters, so you know, we've got qu a, quite a range on them. Their base damage is 130 PPD. They fire, it takes them 0 0.5 seconds to begin firing, and it's a volley of four. So four missiles per turret. Yeah, the damage can't mount up, can't it? Uh, if each of the missiles lands. And the base cooldown for this ability is 32 seconds. Nice, hmm? Huh? Very nice. After a short warm-up, all sentry turrets within the same sector fire a wave of missiles at their current target. You can imagine a scene in like a, a Star Trek movie, or a Star Wars movie, or any sort of sci-fi movie, where, let's say, the good guys are trying to break through like a defensive line, and all these little automated turrets, or well, little, all these massive automated turrets are targeting onto them, and start firing their missiles. Oh, it's so cool. Uh, and lastly, we have the gravity charge. Okay. So let's read up on this. So the range is 10,000 meters. Okay. The detonation time takes 5 seconds. The area of effect is within 3,000 meters. And the base cooldown for the ability overall is 70 seconds. Upon detonation, the gravity charge creates a strong gravitational force that hampers the enemy's flight model and pulls them into the center of the singularity for a set duration. While potent, the gravity charge takes time to prepare, meaning pilots need to employ forward thinking to get the most out of its utility. Placed in the crossfire of entry, uh, sentry turrets, the gravity charge can cause severe disruption to clustered enemy formations. So, it is very, very simple. Or, simple. Sorry, it's very, very similar to the... Uh, I also have a difficult time finding the ship I want to find. The basilisks... Gravity well. So it's a very useful ability. Ability. So you can see, just from the explanation of the ship, how nice it is. 
and it is very nice. Uh, in regards to the crew, it's something I'm also going to be looking into. Haven't had much time yet. Still haven't got uh, all the implants I want, but I'm pretty much just going with the crew you can see here. What I was trying to do was just get an all robot or AI crew. So I've got MXR or I double M I X R. I've got WIM, I've got AX209, of course, obviously. Uh, and I have Ridley J. Fincher. Now, I do have Rutolf somewhere. Where is he? Hmm. He's somewhere. There he is there. Okay. But haven't actually selected him yet. Because I want a better turn rate in my heavier ships. But now, because I'm not in those heavier ships... I'll switch Rutel fight just because I want better manoeuvring. Uh, and what we'll also do is... He can have three attack, and I think that's what I'm going to give him. Now, the turret traverse, I want that more than likely does not affect your sentries. If anybody knows if it does or not, please get in touch in, a, in the comment section below. That would be something nice to hear back about. I'm fairly certain they don't. They have nothing to do with it. But it would be nice if it, they were affected. Uh, we want to increase the missile range. And of course, we can only put one of each yeah, per crew member. And we'll just increase the fire rate. So there we go. Um, in repair, we have Ridley J. Fincher. On navigation officer, we have Rui Tolf. On the captain, we have Wim. On attack or tactical, we have Dice Kaplan because... My lady. And on Engineer, we have MX or IMX R. So there you go. Your crew will vary or differ, depending on who you want. But that's who I've got, and that's who I'm sticking with. I'm going to try and level up Wim and Dice, and I'll be a happy man. So, how about we have ourselves a game, huh? Let's do that. Alright, so here we are. So far, so well. The game hasn't completely destroyed my PC or itself. And we are in somewhat of a stable game. Get in. Now, notice how the ping is still what it was in the video I uploaded yesterday. And... Right. I'm just having a look at our composition here. So yes, uh, before we actually get into the game, let's have a look at who we've got. So, first off, below myself, we have Carmen in the Infiltrator, Bungi Amungi in the Pioneer, Prop Rat in the Reaper, and after that transition, we have Ace Homem in the Colossus. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that right. More than likely not, but send out. So, I'm going to go to Bravo, and on the enemy team, we have Mitch 212 NYC in the Endeavor, Da Wolf in the Pioneer. Kelvin 1138 in the Superlifter and representing underscore NS in the Destroyer. Oh, almost forgot about Alphers in the Pioneer. And forget Alf. Holy shit, why is everyone going to be? That didn't kill a single one of those. Alright, so. Let's see what damage we can do. Now, this is a fairly good situation. Got a destroyer sitting out in the open, so let's make him our main target. So once all three destroyers are up, or turrets even, sentries, missiles out. There we go, and they just burned him down. But we've got a super lifter on him, keeping his ass up. Okay. Return fire at my sentry turrets. Doesn't matter. Too late for him. Super lifter can't keep his heels out doing the damage. So, now that our turrets have went down, we need to back to our forward operating base and, well, heal up, level up. Oh, uh, hello. We've got a gravity charge. Let's deploy it behind that asteroid. I was about to deploy mines, but wasn't really a point, was there? 
Ah, prop rock you survived. Good stuff. So. Right. Right, so one of my sentries is off cooldown. I do have two up at the moment. But I need three and I'd rather oh shit, gonna have to go to Alpha. Yep, gonna go to Alpha and set up a defense. All three sentry turrets off cooldown. B. Not all to the same lane. That would be a horrible fractured space mistake. Oh, there we go. We have an enemy endeavor. Oh shit, we've all sorts of people popping over to. Why is everyone going to. Yeah. No, I just had a game with. Um, Mitch, he's the one in the uh, enemy endeavor, and it wasn't the most pleasant of games, if I'm honest. Take down his turrets, but it is a good time to show you how to deal with it. Focus his turrets down. Okay, let's get the gamma. I would have liked to put a point into attack, but too late. We've saved those turrets for Gamma, but, well. We still have mines as a form of defense. Put down our gravity charge here, deploy our mines there as well. There we go. Pioneer's firing his missiles. Doesn't matter. Oh, there we go. Enemy Endeavor sighted. His turrets are up. Is our team here? They are. Or, oh, sorry, they're not. I had a game in this, just, well, a game prior to this one, in the Endeavor, or well, not in the Endeavor, I wanted to play the Endeavor, but Mitch decided to pick it also, uh, so I picked the Overseer as a last minute choice. Uh, that, chi that ship has changed, <laughs> it, it, it has changed quite a lot since the last time I played it. Yeah. I'm going to push forward to the middle mining zone or mining station in beta. Capture it and set up a land defense. Now what is that? I just saw... Yeah, Pioneer. Another Pioneer. Okay, it's time for a bit of action. Right. Boy mines the gravity charge. <laughs> oh, he's he that's him done for. Target down. Another Colossus to go. And yet we're all going to the same lane again. Why? Bungie is alone in Alpha again. Not good. I've also taken some heavy damage. Need to repair, rearm before I pop into Alpha. I'll do that now. Hopefully I'll have enough health by the time I get there. So you can see that this ship, it does rely heavily on its turrets, its sentries. Without them, well, 
it doesn't fare that great. I kind of see what Mitch is trying to do here, but it's... Nah, it's not a great idea, honestly. What he's doing here is he's popping his sentries down in the enemy base, or the FOB, and then he buggers off. That is a terrible idea. He actually, I was wondering why in the last game, you see, he was on my team, and he kept... He, he was he, he had a hard on for the enemy FOB. Let's say it, let's put it that way. Whenever we were going to Gamma, completely ignored us and went for Gamma. Or sorry, the enemy FOB, always in beta. Always, and I now know what he was doing, <laughs> popping down his sentry turrets, just so they can die. I mean, they're a distraction, if even not. Yeah, incoming missiles. Let's see if I destroy any of them. Nope, not a single one. Now what's hitting me? Pioneer, it looks like. And enemy bombers. I need to fall back. Wow, they really hit the point of fence with a massive fucking nerf bot, didn't they? Get down. Oh shit. Oh shit, now those bombers are on me as well. They could possibly kill me. Ah, uh, good thing they suck. More points in the attack. Okay, I'm gonna help with B. Two of our guys are down. Yeah, let's see. There's something I wanted to mention or point out is the Endeavour, the, sh the actual ship name itself. Uh, the Endeavour is actually a ship that has some importance behind the name. It was the first vessel that Captain James Cook, you know, the explorer, the explorer, the researcher. Uh, the first ship he actually sat out on, but at that point he was a lieutenant, and not a captain. Would everyone stop coming to be- uh, Why is everyone going to the same position as me? And now I can't even- is he fucking only after doing that again? What is he doing? Like, dude, you're just wasting your turrets. You're not getting any kills or anything. Enemy fire has penetrated the port yep, so everyone's just going to the lean aiming. So Homem has reconnected. Didn't even realize he disconnected. And I'm dead. Yeah, let's see how he... Yeah, these guys can hold up. Who's he firing at? Awesome. We We're getting our asses kicked here. Oh, I know that guy disconnected again. Alright, let's get that pioneer. He thinks he's gonna stop himself flying into that asteroid. Not a chance. Target down. You, oh, at least he's actually attempting to reconnect. Just these servers are incredibly 
Dodgy. Okay, come on. Okay, there's the enemy endeavor. I enjoy shooting down his turret so much. There's no real mindset behind what he's doing. He's just deploying them just so they can die. As a momentary distraction, but once they're gone, they're gone. He's to wait for them to cool down, and that's not a good plan, dude. I mean, for example, deploy them right outside their FOB. Only I'm going to be here to provide support fire. So, there we go. See, focused fire. He's taking out two of them. Doesn't matter. All three taken down. Nice to actually see a team know what they're doing though in regards to the sentry turrets. Buggering out. Pull them back to base. Oh wow, we are getting our arches smashed royally here. Superlifter's being a bit of an, an annoying dick. Get him. We now have jump access to the enemy base. Bungie Monkey, don't go to Gamma. Don't go to Gamma. Why are you going to Gamma? What are people doing? Kill him. Stop the cap. There we go. Enemy destroyer down. Superlifter is bugging out. Two of our guys on the ninja cap on the enemy base. We could turn this around if people would actually divide up equally. Stop spamming the same lane. Bungie is doing very well. Holding his own in Alpha a lot of the time. There we go, good stuff. Keep capping the mines. And yet, Alpha. Down these turrets. I have too many targets here for just me to deal with. And they're aiming for my turrets as well. I am bugging out as well. Right. If there's a lot of red on screen, not a lot of blue, then you're in the wrong place at the, at the exact wrong time. So. I'm not endeavor is out for my blood. He's just deploying them wherever. He's not thinking about 
where he's deploying them. Notice how I only try to deploy them out in the open somewhere. Not only somewhere where my turrets can fire, but somewhere where the enemy can't really run to cover from. Where I'll be able to get down quite a lot of damage before anything like that even comes into the picture. Right, jumping to Gamma. I've got my sentry turrets up. Let's see if we can provide some support here. Yeah, there we go. Gravity well is in place. Or the gravity charge, same thing. Different name. Focus fire, come on. Nobody is going for my turrets. The wrong thing to do. Missiles out again. Target down. Although I might be taken out here, doesn't matter. My team's arrived to provide port and backup. So what I'm going to do, if I can, is get back to my home base. Rearm, repair, and I'll come back here to support the team. Enemy team are bugging out as well. Oh, there's Mitch. There's old Mitch in his endeavour. Rot, rot. You know what, I'm going to help him. You know, there is a rule, never go to Gamma when you've already taken it. But, I like the smell of Endeavor Corpse in the morning. Oh, how'd I? Oh, hold on, my turrets were already taking him out. And that was nice. I had an impact on the fight and I wasn't even there. Missiles out, watch them come in. In a crimson hue of death and destruction there they come. Oh yes. Oh that is nice. That's what you want to see. Get out of it. Jump to the enemy base. I overestimated my teammates present here. Presence in this doctor. But no, they're they're not here. Nope, 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 not good. Gamma is not a good idea. Gamma is not a good idea. Or not Gamma, sorry. The enemy base. What am I talking about? Getting way too ahead of myself here. Point the fence up again. Find one of these asteroids. And jump home. Whew. This is an exhilarating game. Started off, I didn't think we were going to win, or even, you know, stand much of a chance, but we're really pushing them back here. Right, so the loadout, not really loadout, but the points that I've spent uh, for every three levels are attack, attack, and attack, because DACA, DACA, DACA. That's all you need to know. That's the only rule that really applies. Yeah, I'm here with the infiltrator. Who's in the infiltrator again? Armin. He infiltrating? He is now. Hello, Pioneer. Let's put it in a position. Let's put the other two also in a position where they can fire at anybody. In the outlying area. Okay. They're placed, deployed, missiles out. Let's move. Keep shifting my armor. Armor on my left side is completely tore up. There we go. Target down. And my guys will just continue attacking the space lanes there for the enemy cargo containers. Alright, let's... Uh, have a read on the enemy base. Jump and where are there so road panels? There they are. Destroyed. 
Oh, there's a super lifter. You ain't going anywhere, bitch. Not today, not again. Whoa! That hurt. What was that? Was that the combined fire of the enemy station? Don't remember hitting that hard. Ah, I think it was the Pioneer's nuke. Could be wrong though, but something hit me smack right in the face. I'm starting to wonder if it was friendly fire from my sentries. Nah, it couldn't be. Nah, it wouldn't hurt our daddy like that. Never ever. But it could have been my own missiles. It kind of flew in their path. Nah, it couldn't have been. Couldn't have been. Right. We do have them against the ropes, which is good. It's obvious that we have the upper hand here. Gotta get the gamma and set up a defense. Set up these sentries. Yeah. Don't jump, dude. Don't jump. That's the worst thing you can do. Yeah, let's get some main set up here. Increase our presence in this sector. Missiles incoming, get some cover between ourselves and it. You're not getting anywhere. Not with my sentries watching you, bitch. Okay, sentry missiles out. Might not even need them. Nope. Oh, enemy destroyer sighted. Sentries. Which fire? Focus down that big boy. Get a little bit closer. Let's give him for a closer look. See how the destroyer operates in its natural environment. Oh, it doesn't operate kindly. Doesn't take people perving on it. Missiles out. Gravity charge out just for the hell of it. Why not? And that was a nice little present from Uncle Sentry. GG, and well played. It was a pleasure, guys. Indeed, Rutolf. Indeed. Oh, he's gone a bit too far there, but I still agree with him. Indeed, small, dead children. That's what you want to be talking about uh, on a victory screen. <laughs> and at Christmas, isn't it? Not Christmas, but... It is in your heart. So there we go. Let's take a look at the victory screen. 18 tech downs. Holy shit, this ship is gorgeous. Okay. Oh my god, I'm one step closer to Elite Commander Omega. Whatever rank that is. Boost, because I've got hundreds of them for whatever reason. And there we go. So, a very nice ship. Very nice indeed. Let's have a look and see how we did. So, 10 captures, the most on the team. Outmatched only by uh, Kelvin in the superlifter on the enemy team, who was a support. Yeah, 18 tech downs. 3 deaths. And one support. Alright. Hmm. Our team overall did very, very well. Even Esohomen. Homum. Uh, who disconnected quite a few times there and repeatedly reconnected and reconnected to get back into the game to help us. 
I don't think we would have been able to do it without him. Well played, dude. Well played. But, uh, yes, I'd like to thank you all very, very much for uh, watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. And if you want to see another ship overview in either this or Dreadnought, leave a comment below. And also, this is something I've been wondering. Has anybody heard of any games similar to this? I've scoured the web. Haven't found anything like this at all. I want to play something, possibly with a single player campaign. In the vein of these two games, only it's, yeah, single player. The only thing I can remember is, um, oh, what what do you call that game? Freelancer. Uh, there was a mod or a cheat to spawn in one of the capital ships. Not the same, though. Uh, yes, and something else, something else, just something else to point out. Uh, I'm also looking for a possible intro. Not something that long, 5 to 10 seconds. Uh, going to have a look at it myself, but if you're interested, post me a link down below to your YouTube video and we'll see what we can do. Uh, but anyway, again, I'll see you next time, guys. Bye-bye.